Hi, uh, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And I'm really excited today because we've got monarch butterflies coming out. They are emerging from their chrysalis. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to manage your chrysalises and how to maintain them and keep them safe until the butterflies emerge and what to do if you have a chrysalis that's in the wrong place or it fell down or it's on the ground for some reason. I'm also going to show you how to tag monarch butterflies. We're going to use a monarch watch tagging kit. If you haven't got one, I hope you got one already. You can tag your butterflies and you can also tag migrating butterflies. So stay tuned for this episode of Nature at Your Door, Monarch Butterflies Emerging and Tagging Butterflies. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's a make this invasive. It's like dog. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's so let's talk about managing chrysalises. If you're like me, you might have had chrysalises in a lot of different places. Some of my chrysalises were formed on milkweed stems inside one of my flight and rearing containers. And the caterpillars cut some of those down because they'd go up and eat. Another caterpillar forms a chrysalis on a leaf and the caterpillar would cut it down. And the next thing I know, I have a leaf and a chrysalis on the bottom of the cage. Another thing that happens is they may form chrysalises on a milkweed stem and then that milkweed stem dries up and the leaves fall off and the chrysalis falls as well. Or you might have chrysalises in multiple places. I've got some chrysalises on the top of my monarch flight and rearing cage. I have chrysalises up on a screen on another container where I just put leaves and I had chrysalises on plastic cages. So what can you do with all these chrysalises? Well, you can either hang them on a string. So I made a structure with three sides on it, three pieces of wood, as you can see here, and I strung three strings across it. And I hung the chrysalises from those strings. Uh, another thing you can do is make an emergence chamber where you place the chrysalis on a paper towel, and uh, that's to give it some grip when it comes out, and then glue in a piece of screening that you can climb up on and hang upside down. Chrysalises in the first 24 hours when they're formed need to be hanging for proper development to occur. But once they've hung for 24 to 48 hours, they can be moved. And you, to move them, you have to move them very, very carefully. You don't want, you can't grab a chrysalis <laughs> By your fingers and just pull it down because if you do the force necessary to pull that off will be too great and it will damage the chrysalis and impact the butterfly's chance to emerge successfully so what i do is i use a pair of tweezers and i finally bought my own my wife did not like that i was using her personal tweezers for biology events so i got a pair of tweezers and I gently reach up and grab the silk above that black stalk that's holding the chrysalis. That black stalk is called the cremaster. And you don't want to really squeeze that either. So I would go up and use my tweezers to tease that silk off. And then I would have a chrysalis and I would have that silk. And with that silk, I could either hang it from a clip like I've done here or I can take it and put it in one of my emergence chambers. The ones on the string, I kept them there and every morning I'd watch them. So the monarch butterfly will spend 10 to 12 days as a chrysalis. And on the very last day when it's going to emerge or eclose from that chrysalis, the chrysalis will turn essentially black. And then when you look at it real closely, you'll realize that that chrysalis that has been green for 10 or 11 days, and now it's the 12th day, 
if you look at it really closely, you can see that the outer shell of the chrysalis is actually clear, and the black you're seeing is the black from the wings and the body of the adult butterfly. And you can see orange in there as well. So it's really cool. You can tell on the morning you get up that you're going to have butterfly emergence or butterfly eclose. So 11 days as a green, 10 or 11 days as that green chrysalis. And that makes sense because being green, it's camouflaged against potential predators. And so it, the very last thing the developing butterfly does is it produces its adult colors. And usually within hours, my chrysalises always hatch between or emerge or eclose, always emerge between 10 and 11 a.m. So I can watch them. One of the concerns is if a, and this is why I move some of these chrysalises from the places where they are to a place where I know they can emerge safely, either in a, an emergence chamber or somewhere where I've given them the opportunity. If they fall when they come out, they can climb back up again. Why is that important? Because they have to hang upside down. If they fall and they can't climb up because they're in the plastic container with smooth plastic sides and they can't climb up, climb up their wings will not develop properly. They'll be dried, they'll be wrinkled, they'll be shortened, and they will not be able to fly and effectively ending that butterfly's life. So one of the reasons I do move these chrysalises is to put them in a place, and this is what I call chrysalis management, is to put them in a place where I know they can emerge successfully. A lot of times I'm there when they do, and if they fall, I would be able to pick them up. But if I'm not there, this is a secure way to ensure that the butterfly can emerge on its own. Because remember, in nature, it's out in the meadow. If a butterfly falls when it is emerging in a meadow, it's got grasses and twigs and all sorts of things to climb up on, not the smooth sides of a plastic uh, terrarium. So here's a look at what I hope you will get to see at your house if you've got some monarch caterpillars. This is the actual moment of emergence of the monarch butterfly. As you can see, he came from that chrysalis that, that had turned black, not because it was black, because the outside of the chrysalis was clear and he had developed his final colors underneath that chrysalis. And you can see at the moment of emergence how small his wings are compared to his abdomen. And what's going to happen is the abdomen is full of fluid. And you can see it's much, much, many times larger than a normal butterfly or monarch butterfly's abdomen. And if you watch very carefully during this video clip, you're going to see that abdomen contract and it's pushing fluid into the wings. And slowly, those wings are going to start to get bigger and expand as the butterfly pumps fluid into them. This whole process of emerging from the chrysalis and pumping the wings up to full size only takes nine or ten minutes. I took a nine minute video, and by doing some liberal editing, I cut it down to two minutes. So, what you're seeing here happened over a nine minute period and I've just cut it back for you. Within minutes, these wings will be full size. However, the butterfly won't be able to fly right away because the wings are very soft and flexible and they're gonna dry and harden into wings that it can use to generate power and flight. And this butterfly, programmed by shorter day lengths, will be set to fly 2,000 miles to the Transvolcanic Mountain Range in Mexico. So now I have four monarchs that are ready to go. They've hung for over 24 hours and I put some nectar producing flowers in the flight cage with them and they're ready to go on their way. So I'm going to tag them. So I'm using the Monarch Watch tagging kit, www.monarchwatch.com. It's a great organization that has been studying 
the monarch migration for years and years and years. And by participating with them and tagging butterflies, we can help this research project in, in real time, help learn more about this amazing phenomena. Some of these butterflies are gonna travel up to 3,000 miles. Now, one of the things I need to tell you, a lot of people, when they first look at me handling a butterfly, they said, no, 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 you can't touch a butterfly. You can't touch its wings like that. And it's true. Some of the butterflies that live locally, when they emerge from their chrysalis, they have very delicate wings and they only live long enough to reproduce and lay eggs. Now, these butterflies have to live long enough to migrate from here, two to 3,000 miles to Mexico, overwinter in Mexico, and have enough energy and strength and physical attributes to make it back to the United States where they will lay eggs on the, some of the first milkweed they find as it comes up in the spring. So these monarchs have evolved with some pretty sturdy genes because monarch butterflies that had weak wings or scales fell off easily or the wings broke easily, they're not gonna make it. They're not gonna pass their genes on to the population. They won't survive. So these guys are tough, so don't worry about that. So on the data sheet, you have to mark whether they are reared or wild. I'm gonna mark all mine as reared because some of them I reared from eggs and others I took as a fourth or fifth instar larva from milkweed and kept them until they pupated. I'm gonna mark them as reared. The other thing you need to do is mark whether they're males or females. And this is relatively easy to do. You have to look at the butterfly when its wings are spread open like that, so you can see the insides of their wings. On the females, the lower wings have uh, very thick black lines on them. The males, the lines are thinner, and there's a very distinct pouch on both wings on both sides. So check that. Let's tag some butterflies. So I've got some butterflies here that are ready to tag, and I've got our tags from www.monarchwatch.com. They have a really good procedure laid out. You can see their procedure on the internet or on the, uh, in the tagging kit they send you. So I'm gonna get out one of these females. And I've already determined which ones are males and females. I put my male in over here and my females here. And you can see that when you grab, grasp the butterfly, you wanna hold them by the front forewings. This is a very stout part of the body. And you can see that none of the scales come off. Number I put on my sheet, and we'll take them out here. And nature at your door. If you enjoyed watching this series I did on the monarchs of the summer of 2020 this was my eighth video in the series and I'm looking forward to next year to coming back and filling in some of the gaps I hope you were able to participate I hope you saw monarchs found monarchs maybe reared some maybe had some of the experiences that I shared with you that I had as I followed the monarchs from milkweed to tagging there is so much to learn about the monarchs. I've always thought I could teach an entire year-long biology class just based on monarch biology and cover all the national science standards for a year of biology. I hope you will follow your own curiosity. Follow up on things that I hinted about or didn't follow up or things you were curious about or things that you had questions about. There's great, great, great resources available to you on the internet. And I always say, if you're watching me, then you have access to the internet and you have access to the whole world. So follow your curiosity, ask questions, write me questions. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and share with your friends and, and teachers and people that may be homeschooling. That's what this is really for. 
I'm going to go back and edit a video on fishing spiders, a video on what black snakes can climb, and we're watching the black snake really go through the paces. And I got a video coming up on the red spotted newt, and I was able to find all three stages in the same day. So I put together an episode on that. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.